I used to do a lot of teaching. I would teach both on-camera classes and also voiceover, and I had sort of a tradition. On the last night of class, I would talk about money. We'd talk about how much we could expect to earn, depending on what kind of job we were doing. We'd talk about the difference between union rates versus non-union. We'd talk residuals, taxes, all kinds of stuff. And then one night, somebody asked me what kind of records I keep to keep track of my income throughout the year. And I thought that was a really interesting question because over the years I've developed a spreadsheet that allows me to tell a lot about what's going on with my career in any given year just at a glance. So if I need any specific bit of information, I can just look at this document and it's gonna be right there instead of having to go and dig for it. So I thought it would share with you my way of keeping records so that you can get some ideas for how to do it for your own career. And I'm actually kind of interested to see how you guys do this. So if you have another way of doing things, tell me below. But stick around because we're going to talk spreadsheets, exciting, in just a minute. Oh good, there's like a World War II bomber up there. That's helpful. You never really realize how loud your neighborhood is until you decide to shoot outside. I think that guy's going away now, so let's just jump right into it. Like I said, I think it's really helpful to know where you've been so that you can plan for where you want to go, and record keeping is part of that. With this spreadsheet, I can keep track of how many clients I'm working for, of course how much money I've made throughout the year thus far, if I'm doing VO more than I'm doing on camera, if I have one client that's like responsible for a huge chunk of my income or not. It's super helpful. So um, it's probably easier for me to just show you. So let's just jump right in. Oh, before I start, I should mention that I use OpenOffice, but whatever software you use to make your spreadsheets is fine. Numbers, M MS Office, uh, I, I, I have no idea what else is out there for spreadsheets. I'm an actor, I'm not a spreadsheet person. So what I've done is opened up a blank template in OpenOffice and I've titled it and I've put some category headings in here. So let's take a look at what's here. Our title, I've chosen VO Income 2018. You can obviously put in whatever works for you there. But let's go over to the categories to see what's important to keep track of. First one is obviously the client. You wanna know who you work for. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a hypothetical job in here. Let's say I did a shoot for Ford. So I would put Ford right there. Now the next one over is job date. I wanna know when I worked that job. It's kind of obvious why you might wanna know that, but um, it'll become a little bit more important later on. So let's just put a job date in there. Let's go with June 1st. All right. Next over is production company. Now I wanna keep track of the production company because frequently the client isn't doing the hiring. The production company is. So if a production company has multiple clients and I'm working for them for multiple clients, in other words, they're hiring me over and over again for different work, maybe I wanna keep in touch with them a little closer than I would with someone who just hires me for one client. So I like to put down the production company to keep track. Next up is the agent, and it's important to know that because if you're working with multiple agents, it's just good to see where most of your work is coming from. After that, of course, we've got taxable income, and this is where I would put the gross amount for the job. So I'm just going to stick with a round number. Let's just call it a thousand bucks. And now I've got a couple of columns for withholding amounts. Sometimes you're gonna do jobs that are 1099 jobs, and in that case, you're not gonna have any withholding. But if you do a W-2 job, then obviously they're gonna withhold some amounts, and you're gonna to wanna to know that. Let's just say 200 bucks there. For FICA, let's call it 85, and state, let's just call it 50 bucks. I'm just pulling numbers out of thin air. I have no idea if these are accurate or not. Next column is commission, and the reason I wanna know that is because I wanna know how much my agent is taking. Frequently it's 10%, sometimes it's 15% or even 20. So it's just good to keep track of that. For this example, I'm gonna call it a 10% commission and that's 100 bucks. The next column over is the date you actually deposited the check. And that's important because you can keep track of the lag time between when you deposited the check, when you actually got paid, and when you actually did the job. Let's say you're non-union and you did a job for a client and it took 60 days for them to pay you. And then later on in the year, you do another job for that client 
This time you don't have to wonder when you're going to get paid. You know that last time they took 60 days to get your check. So now you can just look back at that and go, okay, I've got a couple of months to wait before I get paid from these guys. Let's assume this hypothetical job paid us pretty quickly though. So I'm going to say the 20th of June. The next column over is H&R, and that's important for me to keep track of because I'm a sag after member and we have to qualify for our health and retirement benefits by working. So what I do is I typically use the gross amount of the check and put that number in the H&R column. That's not completely accurate because things like wardrobe allowances or meal penalties, if you get paid for those things, those don't count towards your H&R numbers. But it's important for me to know generally where I'm at through the year so that I can keep tabs on my qualification levels. And next up, I want to know if I've done an on-camera job or a voiceover job. This is important for me because I work in both disciplines and it's just kind of interesting to see if I'm doing more of one thing than the other. I'm going to call this an on-camera job. Now my last column is my manager's commission. Now I work with a manager and he doesn't cover every single aspect of my career. He only covers a couple of things. So he's not getting paid for everything, but when he does get paid, I want to make sure I have a record of that. So let's say if this was a commercial, my manager in this case doesn't handle commercials. So I would put a big fat goose egg there. So that's pretty much it. That's how I take care of my record keeping. And this is the best way that I've found to have a really good snapshot of my annual career all in one place. That way I don't have to go digging for any information if I need it. It's just all right there in the document. I hope you found this helpful. We'll see you in the next video.